Deductive reasoning in proving theorems. What shall we do in this video? We shall we shall show to you why deductive reasoning is is there in in proving theorems. And maybe you do not know it. You know what? Uh, students do things and they don't know the reason why they do it, and they do not uh, or they cannot see the complete structure or picture of what it is that they are doing. But the truth of the matter is, you had been constructing geometric theorems or constructing proofs to geometric theorems using deductive reasoning. But of course, your teachers did not tell you, hey, this is deductive reasoning. What your teachers instructed you to do is prove this theorem, the leg leg theorem of right triangles, and her instructions or his instructions were produce a two column proof for this theorem uh, in the first column you will write the statements and in the second column you will write the reason for your statements this is how you did proving in uh, grade 10 i think i lifted this from a grade 10 manuscript that i am working on and uh, just to get you uh, acquainted with the theorem it says here that given two right triangles, okay, if two legs of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding legs of the other, then the two right triangles are congruent. Okay, so why is this an example of deductive reasoning? Again, deductive reasoning is a reasoning wherein, wherein you are working on a set of assumptions, which you assume to be true. And so where are those assumptions here? In this proof, well, those assumptions which you and your reader or your audience assume to be true are listed in the second column. Definition of right triangles. So you who did this proof and the community who will read this proof, they know what right triangles are. They also know and they will agree to you that all right triangles are congruent. They know also, SAS postulate, this is the side angle side postulate for, for triangle congruence. You don't have to explain to your audience what this is. Because you are assuming that your audience already know this. So, and they agree that this, these statements are true. So, you had been, in fact, doing deductive reasoning when you were constructing proofs in geometry. Okay, so we shall do example 1.37, deductive reasoning in proving theorems. So again, deductive reasoning is a type of reasoning wherein you draw conclusions based on general assumptions, procedures, and principles. So, so you're assuming that the, that the community of mathematicians or students who will read your proof also are working on the same set of assumptions, procedures, and principles. So this is the challenge to you. Prove that if k is an odd integer, then k squared is also an odd integer. Well, let's check it out. Let's check it out if that is true. So 3 is an odd integer. 3 squared, which is 9, is also an odd integer. 11 is odd. 11 squared is 121. It's also odd. 13 is odd. 13 squared is 169. This is also odd. Okay, so let us recall our understanding of an odd integer. An integer is odd when, when you divide it by 2, it's going to give you an integer or another integer n and a remainder 1. So there's always going to be a remainder. So let's say, for example, 3. 3 is an odd. You divide it by 2. There's going to be a remainder 1. The same with 11. So 11 divided by 2 is equal to 5 and a remainder 1 again. The same with 101, you divide it by 2, it's going to be equal to 50, but it has a remainder 1. And if you were now to define uh, an odd integer, look at this, 101 is equal to 2 times 50 plus 1. 11 is equal to 2 times 5 plus 1. From this, you can now say that an integer is odd if and only if it is equal to 2 times another integer plus 1. 
So this ought to be one of the assumptions that you already know and your audience also know to be true. So we shall use this as a definition for our ad integers. You know what? For some of you, this is kind of trivial. But then again, I had been in school for almost 20 years. And some of my students, believe me, will, ent will enter college and they are completely enumerate in the universe of mathematics. So again, let us prove this. So how do you begin your proof? You write the word proof. You write what is given and you write down the definition. So suppose K is odd. Then, oh, by the way, we shall write our proof in paragraph form. Writing proof in column form, that's for kids. That's when you were in grade uh, junior high school. But not anymore when you are in college. You will write it in paragraph form. Okay, so suppose K is odd. Then from the definition of add integers, then k is equal to 2 times n plus 1 for some integer n. The square of 2n plus 1 is equal to this. Now, where did this come from? Okay, well, again, going back to your junior high school math, it's the binomial expansion, okay? Or it's the definition of the square of a binomial. And look at that, 4n squared plus 4n plus 1 is equal to, okay, so what justifies you from factoring out 2 or from writing this one in this way? What justification? When you factor out 2, that is equal to this because of the distributive property of multiplication. Now, this one is equal to 2 times m plus 1 for some integer m. Why is that? I mean, what justifies you from making that statement? Well, that's the closure property of the set of integers under multiplication and addition. What that means is, when you multiply n to n, and n is an integer, the result is an integer. When you multiply it to 2, the product is an integer. When you add it to another integer, the sum is an integer. That is the idea behind the closure property of the set of integers. So our justification for this is this one. Now, k squared is equal to 2m plus 1. Why? Well, what justifies you from writing this part of your paragraph? Well, it's just the transitive property of equality. Okay, look at this. You begin with k squared. This is a sequence of equations of equality, and so you are just you are just using the transitive property of equality. So k squared is equal to 2m plus 1. What's your next sentence in the proof? Therefore, k squared is an odd integer. Why? Because this is how you define an odd integer. Now, if you were now to look at the entire uh, thing, the paragraph, plus the text boxes. This is the structure of a two-column proof. These are the statements and these are the reasons. Okay, so going back to your two-column proof format in geometry, uh, you have the first column and the second column. The first column contains the statements. The second column contains the, the reason. So this has the structure of a two-column proof. Now, when you submit your proof to your teacher, you will no longer include these text boxes. Why? Because we are assuming that your teachers already know, know this, these properties of equality and the properties of the set of real numbers. So these reasons here, these are the, the assumptions that you and your audience hold to be true. So you don't have to write this in a formal proof, which is written in paragraph form. So what will you submit to your professor? Well, what you will submit is something like this. Maybe he will just require you to write it in a pad paper. Or maybe he will require you to write it in, in, uh, in Microsoft Word. So that is how your formal proof in paragraph form ought to look like. And by the way, I forgot to mention... When you end your proof, when you are done with the proof, you end it with this, with this box. 
I don't know what it's called, I, but I think in the old days, when you do a two-column proof, we, we write the three dots. It means the proof is done. But when the proof is written in paragraph form, this is how you indicate that the proof is done.